King, and I'm here with Jenny Fields, the author of Age of Desire. Um, this is Jenny's fourth novel and her first historical novel, and it's about the friendship between Edith Wharton and her governess and sort of, well, companion, Anna. So first, tell me a little bit about your history with Edith Wharton. Like, how did you discover her? Um, I must have read her first when I was 21 or something like that, and um, I immediately felt like she was speaking to me mm -hmm. because her characters um, all feel very trapped in what society wants them to do and become, and they, um, they don't necessarily want that in their lives. And I think as a woman who grew up in the 50s and 60s, you know, um, I, who had high expectations for herself. Um, you know, I was told, well, if you're a woman, you know, you could be a librarian, you could be a teacher, uh, you could be, uh, you know, a, a, be in a woman's job, a nurse, for instance. And, you know, and I felt um, that same sense of pressure that I thought was unfair. And so um, I just related to her right away. And, um, interestingly enough, my first novel, Lily Beach, um, was I named her kind of as an homage to Lily Bart in House of Mirth, um, who is, it's also about a woman who struggles to find her place in society and what she wants to become in the 60s, actually. Mm -hmm. And um, so when that happened, I got my agent because um, I, I sent it to like five agents, and my agent called me and said, um, Do you love Edith Wharton? And I said, yeah, I adore her. And she said, because I had a feeling maybe this, you know, Lily Beach might have been about Lily Bart. And I said, yes. And so she's been my agent for over 20 years. Well, that's a sign of a compatible agent. Right. Someone who understands you that well. Yeah. Um, so this is fiction, obviously, but it's about a real person. Um, obviously, this is a subgenre that's been around for a while, but it seems to be booming these days. Yeah. What do you think uh, a historical novel about a real person offers that a biography can't? I think biographical novels let you kind of live in their world. You know, a biography tells you the information, mm -hmm. and you, you, you understand what happened to them, and some are beautifully written, and I've read some great biographies, but when you're in a novel, you're in their hearts, you're in their minds, you understand what they're feeling, and um, you experience it sort of more viscerally, and I think people really enjoy that. Um, they get to know the person in a way that bi biography can't offer them. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel confident enough to kind of imagine yourself into the heart of someone who is real, like Edith Wharton? Well, she left me an awful lot of material. I mean, I read, uh, she wrote diaries that told me exactly what she was feeling. Um, she wrote six letters a day to different people, and most of them kept them. And so mm -hmm. I was able to read her letters, and, you know, it wasn't really very difficult to understand what she was feeling. And I, I um, just feel so connected to her anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, it was a really honestly a labor of love. I don't think I've ever enjoyed writing a book as much as I enjoyed writing this one. And you discovered um, some new letters between Edith and Anna, right? Before, right before? Well, were you it was, it was just, on? yeah, it was amazing. I was writing the book and um, it was, uh, I was already, you know, pages into the book and I'd already made Anna my secondary character. Mm -hmm. I'd done a lot of research. First of all, I found out that a lot of biographers had said that Anna was a German woman, and she wasn't. She was born in New York. I found that in 15 minutes on the internet. Wow. And, um, you know, so I was already well into Anna, finding out a better family and everything. And then one night, you know, two in the morning, couldn't sleep, went online, and I found out that um, that week at Christie's in New York, they were auctioning off uh, the letters uh, that between e Edith to Anna that she had kept it in an attic for a hundred years and nobody even knew they existed and so I called Christie's the next day I was living in New York I called Christie's the next day and said can I please um, come and see those letters and they were so nice to me they said absolutely they sat me down at a table they let me hold those letters which was so exciting I mean nobody read these you know and um, it was just such a thrill and I found out that everything I supposed about the warmth between them because very little has been written about Anna up to mm -hmm. now um, was true. It was all wow. true and it was even more than I imagined.
match it. It was mm -hmm. just great. So, so that must have made you feel pretty confident in uh, your portrayal, at least. Very much, yeah, it really did. And writing about Edith Wharton, um, you also had to write about other real people. Did you feel, um, I mean, who was your favorite character to write, or did you? Was there any that posed specific challenges? Uh, well, I loved writing about Henry James. Yeah. I actually had way more about Henry James, but when we wanted the book to flow just right, we cut a little bit of it. Okay. But but I think he's so vivid, and um, you know, and I've actually had some James scholars who read it and thought it was pretty right on. He was really a character, you know. Um, Warren Fullerton was the most interesting for me to write about because I think he was mm -hmm. a, really, I think he was a sociopath. I mean. He just had no sense of responsibility, and yet he was brilliant and charming, and so I needed to make him charming, and yet, yeah. you know, uh, this un unpredictable, um, unfathomable person. So, since you said, you know, Edith Wharton obviously felt very restricted by the roles for women um, of her time, if she were alive today, what do you think she would be doing? If she had been born a hundred years later, say. Well, I think she'd still be a writer. She was so devoted to words and writing. But, um, you know, she, the fact that she became a writer in that era and a successful one as mm -hmm. a woman was so beyond our imagination of what that meant. I mean, she broke through so many barriers by doing that. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, uh, huge for her to be so famous. And she really was famous in her day. Um, you know, the one thing she just couldn't, figure out until this eight later age was love and so that's why this yeah. book was so intriguing to me mm -hmm. that somebody at the age of 45 could for the first time you know be opened up to the sensual world she had completely missed in her life it was pretty exciting and what books would you recommend to somebody who finishes your book and wants to know more about edith or anna well um the first thing i'd say is read edith i mean you know read uh i guess my favorites are are classics and maybe not so classics. I mean, I would definitely read Age of Innocence, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is her masterpiece. Um, I love House of Mirth, just love it. And um, Custom of the Country is amazing because it's got this very unlikable character that you can't stop reading about, which is <laughs> just, uh, what a coup, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then I tell you to read uh, Dear Governess, which um, was written by um, a woman named Irene Goldman Price about the letters. Once the letters were found, they were bought by Yale, um, and they're in the Beinecke Library at Yale University. And they asked Irene to write about the letters and, and you know, to annotate the letters. Mm -hmm. And so it's really very touching to read the letters between these two women. Can you tell us anything about what you're working on next? Well, I can't actually at the moment. I was going to write a book. Um, about a very famous artist. I found out somebody else is actually writing a biography of her, and so I am writing about somebody who's a little bit less famous, but no less fascinating. <laughs> but I need um, permission from the estate, and okay. so I'm not really sure yet, but I'm very excited. I was going to, I actually had begun a novel about the 60s, and I may eventually go back to that. It's nice to have a lot of things in your quiver. Yeah, you never definitely. know. <laughs> well, we're looking forward to reading whatever comes next, and thanks Thank so much you. for talking to us today. Thank you.